before we start our meeting today, we're going to have a pledge, a pledge of allegiance, and we're also going to have an invocation. The invocation today is going to be given by Eric Hopkins. We appreciate you coming down today, Eric. The invocation is given for the benefit of the Board of Works, and uh, we invite anybody that would like to give an invocation to come down and do it. All they have to do is call the office. Whether or not you participate in the invocation today has no bearing on the business you've come here to discuss or to take care of. Uh, we invite all religions and all uh, different sects to come in here and uh, offer the invocation. All they need to do is make it known. So with that, I'd like for us all to stand. I'm going to lead the pledge today. <coughs> pledge with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Please bow with me. Heavenly Father, we gather today to make decisions for our community. May this board use their best skills and judgment as they consider each issue that is placed before them. My prayer is that they will act in accordance with what is best for our community and the welfare of our citizens. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Ask everybody if they would uh, go to their cell phones and turn it to the off or the silent position before we start. Now, call the meeting to order. First item of business will be roll call. Jane Oakley, present. Fran Schaumel, present. Leonard Urban, present. Mike Bishop, present. Ron Coldiron. Let the record show that one board works person is missing. We have a quorum and we can do business. The reading of the minutes of the last meeting of February 3rd, 2014. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the minutes as they've been presented for the February 3rd meeting. I'll second. A motion and a second that we second, sent, accept the minutes as they were sent out to the board members. Any additions or corrections? None appearing. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Under new business today, we're going to do the uh, introduction to GIS mapping. Tony? Yes. You come forth. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. I bring you know. good weather from Indianapolis. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is sunny out there, but I'm not so sure you brought it. I didn't bring it. Okay, I, I want you to that. state your name for the record and uh, where you're from and what you're for, here for. Tony so they get it. Sure, sure. Tony Schreiner with WTH Technology, Indianapolis, Indiana. Got it, Daryl? Okay. Excellent. Go right ahead. Don't want to take up a lot of time, but I did want to say thank you for your business. We are the GIS mapping company that has the contract for Fayette County, and because of that, we do business with Connorsville as well. So today is a very simple purpose. I just wanted to remind the board of the fact that we do have the county map built, which means we've also then mapped out Connorsville. So the one thing that I wanted to leave today was we want all departments to be able to know that the map is very useful for public safety. As a matter of fact, 80 to 85 percent of our business is public safety. And if you go out east to New Jersey, that's all they use the map for. Here for Fayette County, for Connorsville, we use it for parcel management and for public safety and for infrastructure such as Connorsville utilities. So the map the GIS purposes can be used for a variety of things. The one thing that I'm glad we have a, a screen to show you, although it, it's not going to be easy for you to identify. David, hit the lights, will you please? Dave, one of you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to point out, and without getting into the specific features on the map, but this is uh, this is a. Uh, the GIS map for a portion of Connorsville. This particular portion of the map, if you cannot tell, is Connorsville High School. And what I have done is just essentially <coughs> created uh, a temporary layer around the high school, if you will, to show how it can be used for public safety purposes. Uh, this particular solution 
It's called Event Manager. It's something that Connersville does not have, but we highly recommend it because it essentially will allow for any authorized individual to place a point, a line, or any size of a polygon on the GIS map. Now what I've done here is just something very simple uh, to show how every police, sheriff, EMS, fire, they have these things called pre-plans. And a pre-plan is typically in a binder on paper. And when an event happens or when you have exercise to practice that event, you get that binder out and you try to follow the directions. Unfortunately, when an emergency happens, you're not going to grab that binder and go step one, step two, step three. This allows for a pre-plan for public safety to be preloaded and deployed within two to three seconds. And what I've shown here is a mock active shooter pre-plan for the high school. Now we certainly don't ever want this to happen, but we all have to plan for these things. And so it is difficult for everybody to see this, but I've essentially just put some points on here, such as uh, that we have lifeline, blockades, uh, police vehicles, EMS, Indiana State Police Sheriff, just putting points on the map to show how you could use this. One of the great features that I'll just point out is you can click on one of these icons, and I'll click on that uh, helicopter, and this will take a while to load the map because we're putting this on the screen, but I'll draw your attention over here to the side. When I clicked on, the, on that helicopter, it gave me information that I preloaded, which was the lat long of that specific area so that that helicopter knows precisely where to land. So it'll all load and, and come back on there. Um, this wouldn't happen if we didn't plug it into the, uh, uh, into, through the VGA cord. But I just wanted to let the board understand and know that um, our software is extremely powerful. Um, it can do anything that you can put your mind to it. And this particular solution we highly recommend because, number one, it's very inexpensive, and number two, it's been proven to save lives. And that's really the key thing when it comes to public safety. We already are working um, extensively with Connorsville Utilities, have a great relationship with Dave. Dave uses the map as a great user, and we're thankful for him uh, and what he's been able to, to do with the utilities and our mapping. So I want to leave it there. Um, I didn't want to come and solicit anything. I just wanted to say. Yeah, does, it, does Everbridge use it too? 911? Because she can pinpoint a section of town and send out a message. Correct. Does she use the mapping? Yes. Now, this is not mass notification because that is definitely not well, our She company. does that, but can't she map out the area she wants to send? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you can take any. We can take this and screenshot it and put it on our Facebook page. We can email it. We can text that image to anybody that we want to. But that particular solution that's called Event Manager is not currently being used um, in any capacity in Fayette County or Connorsville. It's quite all right if you don't ever use it. We just want you to know that it's there, and that's one of the many options that you have for public safety to be able to take your pre-plans, load them on there. But it can also be used for the good stuff like festivals and parades. We can draw the parade route, and we can draw uh, a detour around that so the people know where to park and where not to drive. It can be used for so many different things, but this is just one of the important things that I wanted to highlight. Thank you so much for coming. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you very, you very much. much. Who funds this, Tony? Well, it's really up to how the, the, the city, the municipality, or the departments within that municipality want to do that. A solution like Event Manager, because the county already has essentially that base layer of, we've got the map built, and the county funded that part, which is a very expensive portion, it's about 150 grand, that portion's already taken care of. So to have something like this, which is a software solution that just goes on top of the map, it may be five to $7,000. I've seen municipalities say, we want this, and it's going to be split up between these three departments, or we have that money in, in this fund, and there's a variety of ways that it can be funded. We don't necessarily care, but we'll help with the deployment of, here's who really needs to know how to use this and why this is important. Obviously, for police, fire, EMS, um, it's most useful for, but also for area planning as well. Basically, it just depends on how detailed you want to get, correct? It really does. And the nice thing about it is, is that for any municipality that 
purchases any of the solutions that we have that lay right on top of the map. You don't have to, it, it's not as if it's just for this department or that department. You purchase that solution to anybody in the municipality, any person or department can use that. So will that map show parcels of property and who owns the parcel? parcel? Correct, and we update that on a daily basis, correct. Yeah, and those are, that's just one of the many things that you know, we're a small business. We have about 30 individuals. Unfortunately, we can't be here every month to say, hey, guys, this is what we got. This is what we want to do. But this is part of my uh, strategy for Indiana. We're in 70 of the 92 counties. Connersville is a very good-sized municipality. We want to make sure that Connersville knows this is what you can do with our map. And that base layer is already there, that very expensive portion of that. Here are some other things that you can do with it. All right, thank you so much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Item C would be requesting a banner. Nancy Foster. Did I skip something? That's all right. I'll get Nancy out of the way. She won't sit through all that. I'm not sure what I need to do here. Cause all you got to do is request it, Nancy, and you will act on it. Uh, I'm Nancy Foster, and I'm here on behalf of Bernie McKenna for uh, Relay for Life request. Uh, for a banner for July 7th through the 14th and also for a boot drive um, that would be on the at 6th and Grand and 24th and Grand on the 24th from 8 to 2 o'clock. Okay. Melissa says those are available. Okay. I move that we approve the uh, hanging of the banner for July 7th through 14th for Relay for Life as well as the supporting bucket drive on May the 24th. I'll second. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Nancy. Now oh, let's drop back to the bicentennial. Mike and Ed are going to give the final report of the bicentennial. Who's going to start or stop? Or? <laughs> Sorry. I'm glad Volkos looked at this next line instead of yeah, I leaned over and told Ed. I said, see how it is? They use you and then they just throw you away. <laughs> oh, Daryl, my name's Mike Spark. This is Ed Harold. You got, you got that? <laughs> you wouldn't have known that a few years ago. <laughs> well, this is a day that uh, we've actually looked forward to now for some, some time. We had a lot of fun this last summer and uh, a lot of plans that you know went into it over <coughs> several years but uh, you know let's say all good things come to an end and the bicentennial is over obviously so we're here today to finish up the final business and I hope things were still kind of in flux last week when the Thursday deadline came but I think you all have a <coughs> And uh, what I want to give you to go along with that, uh, well, a few of the main things I have here, would you like to give us that? So I know what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at it. Yeah. That's it. The date of this. Uh, Thanks, sir. Financial statement is important. <laughs> Keep the date in mind, February the 10th, which obviously was earlier last week. What this represents from the very beginning up through the end as of February 10th, this represents all income from all sources, donations, money generated internally through the bicentennial uh, many of our uh, different chair persons through their individual budgets came up with innovative ways to raise funds. So what you're looking at is income from all sources. And we literally had donations from individuals of, of small amounts up through, as I'm sure you're aware, corporations, even out-of-town businesses got involved. The thing that I want to point this out the single biggest donor was the city of Connersville uh, in many different ways through riverboat funds, <coughs> through support, and many other ways. Uh, we couldn't have asked for any more from 
our community and particularly from you folks for your support and the city in general. So the first page income, all sources. Uh, the total you see there, $405. This is well, well beyond our original goal. But when we set our original goal, we set up front that you know we were kind of shooting in the dark. This is not something we do on a regular basis. We don't have a bicentennial. We really had nothing to go by other than we did some research with other communities that had had bicentennial in recent years. We got some information on what they had spent. So we set an initial goal of around $200,000. Because the community support was so great from, again, individuals up through corporations, we surpassed that. What took it to the next level, though, and what really we didn't, it's not that we didn't realize, we just had no benchmark to go by, the tremendous amount, if you look at page two, uh, well, actually, it's lower part of page one and page two, sorry. Then you start getting an idea. I know that you don't know what budget number 112 is, for instance, but as you look through, we had expenses. And this big black book that I carried around for years, uh, all of this part is budgets. Every single budget number there had a budget page that the budget committee acted on. Uh, certain line items were approved. That's why we said in trying to wind this up, we had over just over 200 budgets. An average was about 10 to 12 line items per budget. Some were less, some were several pages long, frankly. So we were dealing with over 2,000 line items, and that's why it has taken us some time to get through all this and wrap it up. But the point is, yes, as you look through, particularly on page two, there's a full page of budget expenses. What really shocked us, as, and it what, it's what allowed us to take the celebration to a level that even we did not originally dream of, so many of our folks took to heart, if we go back to the original agreement with the city and HCI and the uh, Bicentennial Committee, it said something to the effect that the city would provide funding, but the Bicentennial Committee would use available means to try to generate additional income. Well, as you look through this, if you do a little simple math, you would realize that the Bicentennial Committee, our individual committee people through very innovative means, generated well over $100,000 in tournament. That's how, and that's the explanation of why we could set a goal for something over $200,000. We could end up spending, uh, or that total, you see we took in four hundred and five, dollars and we have a balance after all the expenses that total, uh, what, three hundred and seventy-eight. Yeah, 78000 You know, on the surface, it would have appeared that we should have been well in the hole. Well, we knew all along that wasn't going to happen for two reasons. First of all, Ed knew we had a rule. Rule number one was we was not we were not going to come back to this committee and say we need money. You know that that wasn't in our own cards. But number two, as this thing started coming together, we began to see how our folks were working to help move this celebration along. So it was truly a community effort of the first degree, our own people, the community at large, you folks, everybody working together is what made this financial statement possible and allowed us to have a balance at the end. And I will always be appreciative of, of the whole community at large. So bottom line, as of February the 10th, our balance you want to think of it that way, $27,551.41. Up through February the 10th, I'm assuming you had a chance to study this somewhat. Does anybody have any questions about this report? It has been checked by uh, our treasurer. It's been checked by two different sets of bookkeepers. We're all in agreement. We're all on the same page, which is a good thing, I think. Okay. Yeah.
Is that the end of the final report? Right. Okay. Let's act on that then first before we take any. Well, down. as that's written there, yes. But we have a addendum. Well, but I want to just here. accept the final report as that was what we got. Yeah, is that okay? okay. Now, the check that I'm going to hand her is based on this right, item. Right. Right. We'll, and we'll address that here in a minute. Okay. <clears throat> That's fine. Okay. So that was the balance that was left. I need a motion that we accept the report, and uh, it's an audited report. It was handled by nine people, a nine person committee. No budget was ever approved with less than five people approving. Um, so I'm, I'd like to have a motion to accept their report. So moved. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second that we accept the financial report uh, for the bicentennial committee. It's very thorough. Thank you. Did you want to put the amount in there, Your Honor? Yeah, I'll, uh, read it. Uh, Twenty-seven thousand five hundred fifty. Five fifty-one. Forty-one. We'll put that in a minute. So. Please. I'll go ahead with the addendum to the report. And I would like to add one thing. That report is as thorough as it is because of the efforts of uh, a couple people, one in particular. Back in the early days when we were putting this together, we needed treasurer or co-treasurers or somebody to keep us straight. It <coughs> didn't matter for a while because we didn't have any money for a good while starting in. In fact, HCI loaned us $500. That's how we got started, and that's reflected in that report. But we did something that turned out to be a lifesaver for us. Uh, talked to Carol Hunter and Pam Parrott up at First Merchants Bank. They agreed to take on the responsibility. I think Mr. Baker's term would be pro bono. Is that is that a correct use of that right. term? <laughs> And I cannot possibly tell you how many hours I have dealt mostly with Pam Parrott just up there again today. You know, she is now, uh, has an important job responsibility of her own, and yet she has always been so accessible and so willing to help in any way. And believe me, you spent many hours in there when I'm sure she had other things to do. So uh, this report is a result of uh, Pam's efforts and others, <coughs> but uh, we wouldn't have gotten to this point without her. Now, the second paper that Ed just handed you. This was dated as of today. And this is an addendum to that final report that was dated February the 10th because we did have a final action that occurred after uh, that February 10th date. And as you read through there, this is the one additional, and it is the final, bicentennial account activity subsequent to the financial statement. And the reason I know that is because the bicentennial account is now no more. We closed it out this morning, so it's at zero. As a result of the actions of 214-14 by the review committee appointed to study distribution of the bicentennial account balance, a check has been written. Uh, it's on the an official bank uh, check uh, to the Fayette County Foundation, the amount, as you see there, $6,887.85. Subtracting that from the February 10th balance, the final First Merchants Bank Bicentennial account balance just prior to close out, $20,663.56. <coughs> That is the final action of the bicentennial account. So with that, I have a bank check here. Uh, we have always considered that this money belonged to the city of Connersville. That was our uh, agreement. So I have a check here uh, from the bank. We're doing it as a bank check because Pam told me that was the only way she could close out the account. If she was waiting for the check to come back on one of our regular checks, she could not have closed it. So this is why we're doing it this way. So first of all, does anybody have any questions about the addendum? And this is a check that just happens to match to the penny. I'm glad to say. And we would like, Ed, would you? 
We'd like to present this to the city at this time. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can Thank honestly you, say I'm glad it's in I your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> it's been a while coming. <coughs> well, you know, if you think about what was done last summer, every time I've mentioned we, we did this, we did that, I have always been very careful to give credit to where I think it belongs. It was the community. It was all the folks that worked on the committee, the various subcommittees. It was you folks that supported us from your position. There's no way I can start naming names. Uh, I came here intending to mention about three because I'll just get myself in trouble because literally it grew into hundreds. Mm -hmm. And that's not an exaggeration. I'll be real honest. We had so many volunteers step forward in the last few weeks before the celebration and that were there part of it. I literally don't know the names of everybody that ended up working on this. It was, it was huge. There's a couple people, though, I do want to mention, because they've been the unsung heroes totally in the background. One of them is Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker, I'm sure, has a day job that keeps him busy enough. <laughs> but in spite of that, he made it plain early on that I should feel free to contact him any time I had any question about anything legal, the legalities concerning the bicentennial. <clears throat> And I'll say I tested him on that willingness on many occasions, and at least he made me feel like uh, I was very welcome to come to him. Now, I'm a guessing normally you don't go see a lawyer just walking off the street with no appointment and sit down and talk business. He made himself that accessible. And I did mention to him in a conversation the other day, I... I wondered if he fully appreciated what that meant to a layman like myself. Uh, but those legal questions did come up. And to have that kind of accessibility was golden. And then, you know, we had a couple other things to worry about. I didn't have to worry about that. So, Mr. Baker, I want to say publicly how much the Bicentennial Committee and I personally appreciate what you did for us. Well, you're certainly welcome. It was a pleasure, believe me. I enjoyed working with all of them. <clears throat> well, Appreciate everything you did. The other person that I want to single out, at the risk of probably alienating somebody else, but it's another unsung hero. We had great concerns about the ramifications from a liability standpoint of many of the things that were, we were doing in the Bicentennial. Let's face it, the Soapbox Derby had risk. So did many of the other things we were doing. The city's insurance representative, Brad Wilson, said something to me that I don't believe I'll ever forget in one of our earlier meetings. He was, in effect, wearing two hats. And from, and these aren't his exact words, obviously, but it's the, it's the meaning of what he <clears throat> had to say. From an insurance representative's position, you know, what he should have been saying was risk, 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 and uh, probably premium, premium, premium. Mm -hmm. And we did talk about what we needed to do. We talked with Mr. Baker as well. What did we need to do to protect the city and protect all of us? And we, we took those actions. But then Brad put on his other hand. In effect, he said, from, you know, that's what I would say if I was just looking at it from an insurance perspective. But as a citizen of this community, and he grew up here just like I did, he basically told me that you cannot not plan a celebration because of something that might happen. In other words, he was telling us, we'll take care of what we need to do, plan your celebration, make it big. Again, you can't imagine what that meant to me personally because a lot of people were asking, gee, can we do this? Can, can you know, what are the legal ramifications here? What are the liabilities? <coughs> These two individuals allowed us to have a much more meaningful celebration than we would have had otherwise. So Mr. Wilson is not here today. Maybe somebody can put a bug in his ear. <coughs> but he was, he was greatly appreciated for what he did. Okay. The 
bicentennial bank account is now closed up. We've transferred the money. So I think at this point, Mayor, can we say the bicentennial account is no more. It's in your hands. They just accepted the... I can go home tonight. And, you know, like they accepted that and it's a okay. no <laughs> Well, I'm not going to drag this up. But here is, uh, if you look at the uh, little agenda, and I apologize for not having this to you the other day, but we didn't know exactly where everything was going. We want to back up just a little bit uh, and talk about the final bicentennial committee meeting that we held on December the 4th up at the most appropriate place probably we could have held it, and that was the Roberts Building. You know, a lot of our bicentennial committee members played a part in helping work on the uh, Roberts Building and some of the earlier stages of its rehab. In fact, I remember one Saturday morning when it was uh, the coldest morning of, what would that have been, winter of 2012. Several of our bicentennial people were up there taking woodwork off. We could all see each other's breath, and it was, I think, uh, uh, I think uh, Bob Hansen caught me in a picture with my army hat on that comes covers up my whole face because it was cold. But it, was, it was worth it doing the money. It was worth it. The day we were all up there uh, for the uh, dinner at the beginning of the bicentennial, that one event made it all worth it <laughs> to see the inside of that building. Anyway, back on November the 18th, we sent out an email uh, asking our bicentennial committee members to come to a meeting on December the 4th and bring, give some thought in the meantime and bring with them their ideas on how the balance funds might be spent. We made it plain this would be suggestions only. We would not be making any decisions. We also made plain that email that that decision is yours. But, and I'll give the mayor credit for this, he was pretty adamant that he wanted the Bicentennial Committee members to at least have a voice to state some ideas and opinions on how that money might be utilized. So we had that meeting on December the 4th. You're probably wondering, why did he include all this stuff? He did that for a purpose. I wanted you folks to get at least one visualization of just how huge this whole Bicentennial thing became. So there's almost two full pages that was the email list that went out to our people that had been acting in the committee. So we invited them all to the meeting. They came. I'm going to draw your attention primarily to the third of those three pages. Because on the third pages, by the way, it says, if you look at the top, it says page three of eight. There are not eight pages. The rest of it was responses. People emailed back to me. Yes, they were going to come to the meeting. They were going to bring a pop roast or something, so I didn't include that part. But on that third page, what we did was we had every suggestion was taken. If anybody came there and made a suggestion, it went on the list. The list was put on white boards or uh, white paper. We gave every person, when we final call, any more ideas, when all the ideas were exhausted, then we gave each person one of these. A little strip with five sticky dots. We asked them to go up to those ideas that were all listed and put, no, not necessarily one, two, three, four, five, just their top five picks, one dot on each idea that they liked and thought was most worthy of being considered by you folks somewhere down the road. Then at the end, we just simply tallied it up. This one had X number of little sticky dots and so on and so on. So what you're looking at here First of all, it's listed by top five. Uh, you see the number one got 36 votes, and so it won by a wide margin. Uh, Adrian Ellis actually made a short presentation to the group on a what seems like a very exciting tourism idea for this community that has great potential to grow tourism downtown, include the airport, uh, the Whitewater Valley Railroad. He did a presentation and you can see there, it won by a wide margin, 36 votes. Second place, 22 votes, and you can read this, investment to market tourism, uh, kind of a marquee kind of a sign where you tell people, you know, we've got 40,000 people a year coming in to ride the train. They don't know what else is going on in this community. So 
they were talking about some way to come up with a message board of some sort to uh, allow visitors an idea of what's going on here. Third place, 14 volts. Uh, the mystery mural that the Arts Association painted. I hope you all got a chance to see it during the bicentennial. The two by two foot squares that were up there on the side there in front of their building. They're still looking for a permanent home for that. So uh, that came in third on possibilities. 12 volts, fourth place, commemorative plaque downtown to commemorate the bicentennial. Fifth place was actually a tie, 11 volts for a partnership between Connorsville and the railroad to establish tourism and uh, fun for the permanent Pioneer Village. I'm not going to read through all the rest of them, but you see every idea that was voiced, we've listed it with the number of votes that it got uh, clear down through the ones at the bottom. And uh, sometime when you, if you care, you can see that we, we said we would include this as part of the final report. That's the purpose of this information today. And I want to emphasize again, everybody knew going in, these were suggestions only. We did not ever intend to try to buttonhole you folks into feeling like you had to do anything in particular. Any questions about that? Ed, anything you want to add to that? I'm afraid you'd say that. No questions? Well, then let's move on. I think you all had a picture of a strange looking building. Included that picture for a couple of reasons, but partly because I wanted to make sure I got in the record where that little log cabin came from. Uh, yeah, more than that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the dream. Back in the earlier days of the planning for the Bicentennial, uh, it was actually, well, let me get this out of the way first. If you look over at the right of the picture, that building, this little vlog cabin was do donated by Bill and Brenda Ellis, uh, northern part of Franklin County. Bill actually had contact with one of our committee members and the, somehow the log cabin became part of the conversation. He was about to tear it down just to get it out of the way. If you look, there's a newer building right behind it. I mean literally right behind it. And he wanted the cabin out of there. So he couldn't burn it down, but he needed it out of there. So <coughs> it evolved. We talked about it. Some of our committee members, I was included, we thought it would be great if we could give Connersville a permanent tourism boost through the idea of establishing a uh, Pioneer Village. Some of us were saying, and would still say, why should we have to go to Connor Prairie or somewhere else when we've got the history right here? John Connor was here. So we thought it would be great if we could establish a Pioneer Village, this would, in the dream, this would have been building number one of what we would hope would have grown for years. Because of that movement, uh, some of our members got together. We went down Ed Spring, fairly early spring of 2012. We took this building down a piece of time after we had taken many pictures from just about every angle inside and out. We made up drawings so we could number the parts. Some of us have been involved in taking down buildings like this before, so we had some experience. We tagged everything, copious notes, and we disassembled the building. In the meantime, we were working on trying to find a location for the would-be John Connor or whatever its ultimate name would be. Uh, Pioneer Village. We were unsuccessful with a couple different major attempts, presentations that we made. We always had a standby location where this could have been erected. That, was, that offer was made in the early days. But we were trying to create something that would boost downtown Cartersville. So we were hoping for a location down 
near south end of town because we felt like something like that in connection with the railroad is what we need to boost revitalization of our downtown. Well, obviously, we never we were unsuccessful in securing that location. So, in the meantime, we took the cabin down because he was wanting to plant grass that spring. In fact, did we moved because we didn't have any location for it to go? It moved out to the back of my place, and we put one of my big tarps on it, covered it up, stacked it so air could get between the different logs, and it's been there ever since. In the meantime, we're out in the high flatland where the wind gets terrific. The wind has destroyed the tarp. Uh, we put another smaller tarp over part of it, tore it up. So it's sitting out there exposed to the elements at this time. It's up off the ground about a foot. But that's the story of the log cabin. I already shared a little bit of the dream. Some of us hope that dream doesn't die. But it's apparent at this point somebody else would have to take ownership of that idea if it's to live. Again, the basic idea was, and we knew all along, it would involve, you know, this was something that, in fact, we wanted it to go on beyond the bicentennial. That was what we hoped for out of many aspects of the bicentennial. We would celebrate in the summer of 2013, and then benefits would go on and outlive the bicentennial year. This was to be one. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, so at this point, you folks own a cabin. It's just disassembled. Bottom line is, uh, it's not hurting anything out of my property, but I would like to see it move by September of next year. That's before I would get involved with far, fall harvest. And mostly because it'll just deteriorate if it sits there exposed to the weather. I'm just going to throw out a suggestion. We've got empty buildings in this town, empty factory buildings. I would hope somebody would be generous, generous enough to offer an indoor location to store this building is in. I would help with the load on my end. I've got the equipment to load it. Somewhere down the road, I would hope there is a use found for this building. But if it's allowed to set out, you can see it's a very, very old cabin. And if it's allowed to set out in the weather, eventually it'll just be, you know, nothing left to do anything with. I will, in the truth in advertising, I will tell you, if you look closely, you see uh, where it's had mortar slathered around on the lower part. It needs work. We noted on our original set of drawings when we took it apart, some of the bottom logs were unusable and we noted which ones they were. So to put this cabin back up is doable. And I'm saying that from a standpoint of taking down buildings before and putting them up. Another of our members, a couple of them have been involved in those things as well. We know it could be put back up. But it's not just something you go out one day and take a set of plans and put up a building. It's gonna to have to have new logs cut to match the dimensions of the original or several that were too badly weathered. And uh, it's a project. I think the dream was worthwhile. We thought so then. I still believe that now. I don't think we're ever going to have the five shoe stores on Central Avenue again, so some of us felt like we needed to do other things to renew interest in our downtown because we still consider it the heart of our city. This, in a near downtown location, we thought was a step in that direction. Didn't happen. So that's where it is. So it's, what I'm asking at this point is, for you folks, I'm certainly not looking for a decision today. I'm asking you to consider what is the fate. You've all got a picture now. And I hope you see a little bit of the vision of what could be. But just like the bicentennial and most other things that are worthwhile, it would take effort. So that's the presentation of the log cabin. Any questions? Ed, do you have anything to add to that? Ed was down there, I think, virtually every time anything was going on with the disassembly. What are its dimensions, Mike? Roughly 18 by 16 to 18 or something. Something. You know, I should have brought that. I didn't. But it'd be in the 
Do you just and have the logs or do you have the roof structure too? We've got, uh, yeah, we've got the rafters. You know, if you look at that picture, you may not be able to see the detail. We think, like many old buildings, we think it went through a metamorphosis at one point. If you look closely enough, right above the door, you see the ends of what looks like the tails of the floor joists sticking out through the walls. You see those little rectangulars across mm -hmm. there? Well, in fact, those are the tails of the floor joist for the loft. But it didn't quite make sense until we figured out. We think this is so old, this is where you're supposed to say, well, how old is it? <laughs> well, we don't know. But we think this started out as a very low one-story log cabin. The reason those pockets are exposed, you know, you normally wouldn't want to do that. That's because that's where the rafters from the roof used to come out through those notches for a little overhang. Somebody later has taken the roof off, built it on up about four feet, and then they put a loft in there and used those pockets. Now we think that because of those pockets and also the fact that the logs up above weren't an exact match for the ones below. It's all been done way back. Yeah. It's all ancient. <clears throat> but we think that's a, uh, you know, as a kid, I remember a couple cabins in this area that were like that would have been, where the roof was so low you had to duck to get in the front door. We think that's what this one started out as. So I, Mr. Scholl, I'm going to say it's around 18 by 19 or something like that. Okay. Okay, we're down to final comments. I'm sure you're ready to go on to other things, so I'll make it brief. The bicentennial in this community would not have been possible had we not been successful in saying from the beginning and then because everybody worked with us, it was not political. It was not about a person. It wasn't even about the Bicentennial Committee. It was from the very beginning, it was about the community. Because of that, and because people bought into that idea on that basis, we were able to accomplish something that I'm pretty proud of, and I hope you are. So many folks worked together from all walks because they saw it as a thing that benefited everybody in the community. So I think that's why we bridge so many, uh, so many gaps, so many voids. For once, it wasn't Republican and Democrat. Can I say that? I can't now because it's over. <laughs> but I will always appreciate the two major parties. I knew both chairmen well, and neither one of them could do enough for us. They didn't care about politics. I mean, truly, I don't think they cared at all. They knew this was community. And from top to bottom, I really believe that's why we were successful. My hope is, as Connersville moves forward, we could find other ways for the community to work together on that level. Because we've proven what we can do in this community. You know, you read the old history books, gee, look what they did back in the early 1900s. Look when they tried to entice the Lexington Motor Company to come to town. I don't know how many of you are aware of this. They said, if you come to Carnesville, we'll build the brick factory for you. And they did in this town. People say, well, that was back then. Well, now we got something else to point to. Yeah, but you know what we did in the summer of 2013? And we, it was a community effort. Those are my uh, final comments. So we've come down to this. What started in... 2009, I think November, when Paulette Hayes called the first sit-down meeting to start thinking about bicentennial planning over in the library. I can still picture it in my mind. She was sitting at the north head of the table. A few of us were scattered around. That's when it formally got underway. Of course, I've said it many times at that meeting, neither Paulette or I, probably anybody else, had the slightest inkling of what was to come. All that was unfortunately taken out of the picture through her passing away. I never dreamt that I would be in the position I was asked to fulfill. I'm pretty sure Ed 
wasn't too aware of it either. <laughs> Probably a good thing. Looking back, it's one of the hardest things I've done. And I think Ed would probably agree from his standpoint, but it was also perhaps the most rewarding. This is our hometown. It was worth every minute. Thank you. Oh, one other thing. I talked to Mr. Baker the other day. We think it's now time to bring whatever the official means is to bring the Bicentennial Committee to a close through ordinance action, whatever it takes, Mr. Baker? Well, I think a simple uh, a voice resolution by this Board of Works would suffice that we have a motion of the Bicentennial Committee. Let's, let's see close the committee report and then we'll do that, okay? Sure. <coughs> I'll have a you note. Know, I'm sorry. Here's your committee report. As Mike alluded to, I appointed a committee to uh, Figure out about the money with the foundation issue. Last uh, time we met, um, Mr. Uh, Shomo and I served on the committee, as did uh, Pat Suman, representing the Bicentennial Committee, and uh, Mr. Baker, but I'm trying to think of the attorney. Uh, Pete Shaw. Pete Shaw Pete represented Shaw. the foundation. Mm -hmm. There was an agreement drafted with the foundation signed by the Bicentennial Committee that said that they would use the money for certain things and those dollars that weren't used would re be returned. The committee determined that of the $27,000, the 500, whatever it was, $6,884.87 was that portion of the money. So I'm giving you this committee report today and I'd like for you to adopt it. That'll make this all legal. She's already received the check for the difference. and if. Uh, if you don't agree, I'll have to go find the other $6,884. So I'd like to make a motion you accept the committee report. I'll make that motion, Your Honor. And we accept this report. Is there a As second? so stated. Yes, I'll second. We have a motion on the floor to accept the committee report on the uh, final tally here, distributing two different checks. We've already accepted the money for the uh, city. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carried. That's out of the way. Now, Mr. Baker says it's in order. We accept a motion that the... I kind of disagree because I still got to put up that plaque. But I guess that's not part of the bicentennial. That's, that's the view at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. All through this bicentennial, there were people, different people that would say, you know, are you going to commemorate this in some way? And I kept telling people, Yes, when it's all over, we will put up a plaque someplace, and uh, we'll commemorate that. And I really want to commemorate the centennial, because that was in 63. I wasn't here yet, but I think it'd be nice if we could see those uh, a little bit about what took place. So I'd like to do both. But uh, I'd like them for a motion to say that as of the final account, that the bicentennial is officially concluded on today's date, the 18th of February, 2013. Do I get a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Jane made the motion. Mike, second. Is there any discussion? Any of you folks out there want all in favor say aye? Aye. aye. Any opposed? It's done. It's a done deal. Thank you so much Thank for you. what you've done. Uh, both of Thank you could never uh, be paid enough for all the things you, you've done. I watched you every minute of all the weeks and months and years and uh, felt sorry for you at times. And uh, sometimes you aggravated me so bad I could <laughs> kick you. But uh, I think all in all it was a great celebration because we had nobody got hurt. We had no skirmish. I think we had one seven-year-old kid the police had to remove from a and one of the events, that's all we had. On the last day. <laughs> yeah. uh, the good Lord provided cool weather. It was a little wet, but he provided nice cool weather for us to do it. It wasn't really unbearable hot. And uh, as a whole, I think it all went very nice. And uh, I'll always be indebted to you, too, for leading. It takes leadership to do something like that, and you certainly showed the leadership and the cooperation one of you were there all the time working on it, and you put so much into it yourself. 
I'd walk down to lunch and see him up there in that bucket fixing the windows and bringing corn in to burn in the corn stove so we could keep warm down at the office. And uh, it, it, you've done a wonderful job. And your names will be on the plaque when I get the committee together and we get her built. I can promise you. And I, you owe me something. You owe me a list of the day chairman. I told you a long time ago I wanted a list of the day chairman and those people. I can't put everybody on there. You saw that email list. But I think the day chairman who put their heart and soul into it, those committee members, I need those. I will be appointing a committee here to start. But we're unemployed now. <laughs> this is a volunteer. You'll, this you'll a, get your list. This is a volunteer job this time. Oh, okay. but I'll appoint a committee and we'll start working on commemorating this in the in, in the right way, and uh, we'll decide where it should be, and uh, we'll, we'll start working at it. And maybe this summer we can uh, dedicate those plaques. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and I appreciate. It. I think they thank you. Do you want to copy that committee report? Thank you. Okay, we got a request for a banner for the Connorsville High School play, Bobby Ann Park. Huh? Do you know what that's about? She hasn't called you. Okay, we'll have to skip over that one. Do you know anything about it, Jane? Is it okay if we just go past that then until she can be? Mm -hmm. Yes. Resolution to transfer. Uh, this is in the park, 1604, from operating fund uh, to center rent, soccer, pickleball, and softball. So I move we pass resolution number 2014-04. I'll any, second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Department matters. Okay. Uh, utilities. David? Afternoon. Hi, Dave. As you know, the, just in a matter of doing business, there's at times uh, some uncollectible accounts. And uh, you have uh, in your packet a list of those that were uncollectible. Uh, through 2007. So I request permission to remove these um, uncollectible accounts from our books. You see the amounts there also uh, in totals on that front page and all details on the following pages. So we've been trying to collect these since 2007? Been trying to collect them. Well, uh, once 2007 is up, we stopped with the exception of whenever a named customer comes in and wants service, we I see. attempt to collect them. But there's lots of different reasons why they're uncollectible, and, and you'll see the list uh, right here. You know, bankruptcies, affidavits, service charges, you know, there's lots mm -hmm. of reasons why we're just unable. Did you want to read the amount? I can? Yes. Uh, uncollectible for the water department is $8,937.76. For the sewer department, $2,940.03. For stormwater, $5,958.09. Trash is $2,564.46. Of course, with trash, we merely handle the money. We aren't actually in charge of that. With a uh, total of $20,400.34. Those are uncollectibles, 2007. With your permission, we will uh, write those and remove those from our books. So we have these for 2008, 2009, 2010? Uh, in time, as we... Is there a time limit you have to wait to do this, I presume? None that I know of. Do you know of any, Julie? Most businesses do them in five years or something That's like that. Okay. They can recapture them if you're lucky. You still try to collect them? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said, as people come in for services, uh, we try to collect it. 
many are there, David? Approximately. Yes. Uh, I know we're about 50 on the page. About 45 to 50. I'm thinking uh, 30 to 40 per page, and we have. There's too many, let's put it <laughs> Uh, five and a quarter pages. So, 300. Good estimate. And, and Dave, they are divided on, on this, you see that. Yes, I am. And noting the number of finance companies on here, which I think everybody is on here, both local and national, um, is there any attempt when properties close, change hands, maybe they're closing the dust truck, that I don't even know if that's possible to do. You, it has to be a lien against the property, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, for someone other than the person who the bill was named for. Okay. Uh, now, when it comes to um, mortgage companies and so forth, if, if there's no lien, uh, but okay. just like when you go to tear down a house, it's finding who actually owns that property. Right. Mm -hmm. Traceability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, that's why. Uh, we talked about earlier the uh, uh, WTHGIS mapping that the county has. We often use that as our um, assessor's information for uh, property record cards, who owns it, you know, how many apartments they have, uh, what's the latest information. We, we take that off there because uh, it, it is updated regularly. So we need a motion for him to accept this. Yes, I. I uh, you know, I hate. To, I know we have to do this, but it, does this encourage people just to not pay their bills? No, and no, it's a good point. Well, and it, it does. After um, it, the explanation is here, because it cost us to file a lien. Sure. There are some amounts we just do let go, but if they're in a great amount, we do put a lien on, or utilities company does put a lien on the property. So. Well, we can't put liens on water charges. Mm -hmm. Correct. Sewer. Only only. Sewer. Sewer. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So the motion would be to accept the young collectible accounts January through December of 2007, mm -hmm. Connorsville Utilities. Mm -hmm. so I'll make that way. motion, Brian. I'll Your second honor. that. You've heard a motion. The second one in favor is say aye. All right. Any aye. opposed? None opposed. Okay, Dave. Thank you. Um, Am I correct that the um, company policy and ordinances will be discussed today? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have uh, here with me um, Jason Chop with Strand, an uh, <coughs> engineering firm that has assisted us in many things. Uh, they currently is offering to assist us and uh, a CSO audit, a combined sewer overflow audit, that's a required audit by IDEM, Indian Department of Environmental Management. Uh, it's in-depth, both in record and in site uh, visits, um, and it's, uh, it's more work in a short amount of time than what we can do because they want to be here the 12th of March. So, Jason, if you can come up here, uh, I'd like Jason to uh, uh, make a proposal to you. Um, how's everyone doing? Hi, Good afternoon. Afternoon. How are you? Um, recently, the um, city utilities received a letter from IDEM that they're doing their CSO audit, which is a standard protocol for uh, CSO communities on every uh, uh, semi-annual cycle to come down and see how you're doing with your program. Um, in advance of the audit, they have a 12-page uh, informational form that you fill out, checking your inventory, what you've done, what you haven't done, your um, operational and maintenance procedures. Um, then they come down for a, uh, typically a full day audit and they'll be on site um, following up on what you claim to have accomplished. And then after that, there's a follow up procedure. They may ask some questions. And when they're done, they will give you a formal review of how you're doing with your plan. Um, I talked to Dave and Mary Ellen about it and they had asked me to uh, put together a um, uh, estimate of what it would take for us to assist you guys through that process. And um, we would assist in uh, filling in the form where you guys weren't um, uh, up to speed on the information as needed, participate in the audit with IDAD, interact with them, follow up on the phone calls, and get you guys through this audit process. 
So I told Dave that I could help you out at, um, on an hourly basis. We have a technical service agreement with the city uh, not to exceed $3,800. And that will, that's based upon, um, we've done this recently for two other communities, similar size to, um, to Connorsville. And based upon going through that process, um, I feel that we can help you guys out and get you through the audit process. How often does this have to be done? Every two, every two, years. Every two years. I think you guys haven't had it done. Um, I was really surprised you haven't at this point. That, that's the reason I asked. And I, um, I, I ended up, after Dave asked if we could possibly help, um, I ended up calling your um, IDEM, your CSO program manager at, at IDEM. And it just so happens she's the same personnel staff member that we worked with in the other two communities. So we're very familiar with her. And um, uh, basically, I think what also happened, you haven't had your audit, and then um, your NDOT project's tied to your sewer separation, and that's been delayed several times, so there was some concern that you're slipping off your schedule. Okay. So that'll be some of the things that are discussed. Um, so I told Dave I could help out. If you guys want me to help out, just yes. let me know. And um, well, a couple of things I discussed with uh, Jason was time frame. Their deadline. Uh, yes, uh, they are going to be here uh, the 12th of March, uh, and she wants uh, all of this information back by the 4th of March. Can that be done? And, and uh, yeah, we can do it. They can I mean, do it. Uh, our in staff personnel cannot. Now, if there are other, other duties. Um, and there's maybe technical things that they can answer that uh, we may be unable to. Uh, he's already familiar, his firm is already familiar with uh, our combined sewer overflow uh, and uh, uh, our strategy. Uh, so um, taking all that into account, I asked him to put this together for me to present to you. What's the maximum cost again? Uh, 3,800. Is it not the reason that we're having to push this thing so quickly? Because we're hindering them and holding them up. Is that what I'm understanding? Or that's part of it? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand that. You're, where? you're separating your sewers, the, the item portions to your sewer separations. Yes. And you've tied one of your sewer separation projects into the Grand Avenue street job. Okay. So that's your right. schedule, you're sense. supposed to be complying with IDEM, but any delay in the INDOT project has fallen back on your IDEM schedule. Okay. So right now, because you have those projects tied together, they impact each other. And the auditor Thank you, Mike. will understand once it's presented. I'm sure that, that that's the reason we're behind on that. Um, they're going to go, go through a series of questions and they'll understand. And then what they'll do is they're going to, um, we'll assist getting through the audit, but then you'll probably you'll end up with a formal review letter. And one of the things is what we've previously discussed, they're going to want to see a, a capital plan of how to, how to look at your future projects and get back on schedule. This, this audit, everybody's going through it, isn't it? Yes. I was very surprised you haven't had the audit to this point. Mm -hmm. It's, not, a, it's not just picking on us. It's, a, it's an audit for everybody right. that's doing separation. We right. talked about this a couple yeah. weeks ago, and it, they must have, their ears must have been burning because it came up. <laughs> <laughs> if we agree to pay this cost with you, is that means you're with us from beginning to end, correct? Sure. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. That's um, uh, based upon what we've done before. I think we can help you out. I'll work with Dave and Mary Ellen to get the forms filled out. Participate in the audit. Um, you had stepped out, and um, then we'll follow up and get you through it. Okay. You don't think that we can do the audit on our own? Not, not sure. Not no. one. Now, not with the required information and the time frame they're demanding. March fourth, I believe. I, uh, I got the audit. I looked at yeah. the uh, IRC report, uh, which is again a multiple page report, uh, uh, has to be done uh, by uh, uh, March thirty. And we have also a DNR report all coming first of the year. Everybody wants their information and they want it now. Uh, so just, um, I think we're just not able to get all that information in sh that short of time. And how much is the price? I didn't hear that. 3800 Maximum. Not, not, to exceed. not to exceed. And we'll do it on an hourly basis. So if the audit goes fairly smooth, if, if it's a half day audit instead of a full day, you're only going to get invoice for what we spend on it. One of those things, and I just said it's, it's aggravated. Not not I move we contract stream associates, and that's correct, right? Yeah. We'll be right one, to um, assist Conjure Utilities with the CSO audit that's coming up in March. I'll second that. And a not to exceed at $3,800. At a not to exceed $3,800 billable by the hour. Thank you. Is there a second? You're saying, yes, sir. 
a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. While you're up Thank here, you. um, I got your proposal on the on the Western Avenue. There's no way we can afford that. Okay. I had asked Strand to look at Western Avenue. I, I talked to you last week about black docking it from one the proposal to look at it and write the specs was thirty five thousand dollars. I can probably black top a block with it. That's so I, I can't spend that money. Sure, just so you know that was and I want to make sure you understand what we gave you. We gave you to put the bid together or the spec together, bidding documents, bid it for you. You asked for corings along uh, between 3rd and 30th and then we also gave you um, services to help help out during construction for progress meetings okay. if you feel you can you don't want us involved in construction or the paving aspect if you want to bid it yourself I can eliminate well, I, those services I have confidence in the people that will do it whoever gets the bid can do okay. that we don't have to have supervision I'm, I'm concerned because I know that it's sinking in places sure so I wanted to see how much uh, asphalt or brick or concrete whatever's under there mm -hmm. and but I can't spend thirty five thousand dollars it's probably a two hundred fifty thousand dollar job and I can't spend that I was hoping more like thirty five hundred dollars just to write the bid specs for me okay I can't write the bid specs I guess I'll have to and we don't have a city engineer here sure so um, well if you feel like you don't want us to be to bid it for you or to do anything during the paving. We, we I can give you a the bid smaller fee, bid, but and we can bid it. That's not a problem. We know how to do that. We've done it every year for years. Okay. I mean, I can I can modify it, send it back to you. It is going to be more than thirty five hundred dollars. I can I can assure you that. But um, if that's what your service you're looking for, I can modify it and see if it's more to your liking. Um, but based upon we we do this. If you want to try it, but it's it's got to be very reasonable sure. because we're just limited on the funds sure. that we got. And and man, I came down Western Avenue. Well, I don't know if any of you have come down, but it's all it's, it's, it's come apart. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe it. All but the way it's down, it's come apart. Yep. No, we can sit down um, at some point. We'll go through what I was providing with that, and we can cross out what you don't want. And if it meets your needs, great. And if it doesn't, um, sure. obviously you got. Well, as you know. We're limited on the money we get Absolutely. for black topping each year. And normally I just take this straight and I'll say I want it brown and recap maybe an inch and a half. I hate to spend all that good money if there's nothing under there to hold it. Correct. And just so you know, you would ask you would ask for corings to determine it. The corings alone the corings themselves were two thousand yeah. dollars. And that's a we hire a contractor to bore those holes. So what do you, what do, you what do you guys think? Help me here a little bit. Well, when you drive up there tonight, you'll say, oh, my God, we've got to do something. It yeah, I, I've what it been is. twice in the past few hours. I think under that railroad trestle from there, until we do something, we should get some caution signs up there, because that's the way uh, that I'll, is. I'll get that done. I'll get that done today. It's going to be, there's going to be a wreck there if we don't. Would you? Uh, if, if, yeah, if, if you, you want to sit down. Pause on, you've got to keep it to a minimum. Let's, let's sit down and go over what I gave you and figure out what you can do in-house and then I can revise it because it then sounds I'll like I'm giving you more than what you're wanting. Yes. So you want to do the corings? I'd like to know what's under there so we can see if we take, grind it off and put it back, is it going to be any better or is it just going to break up? How much would that be? Uh, the corings themselves are $2,000. So you're talking about core samples? Or yes. Just is that They're going to actually drill down and take a sample of the yeah, asphalt out the samples from 3rd all the way to 30th. For each one that they do? What's that? Is that for each one that they No, that's the total the cost total? for all of them. I forget how many in quantity. No, we worked with the, the soils, uh, the materials company to determine the right yeah. amount. The more we have, the more we know yeah. what's going on. See, we didn't have this problem until trucks started going all the way to down. I mean, the and truck traffic on it is tremendous. We should state would take it over the state. Yeah. Route, and route, route. We've tried route, that about four years in a row. We've tried to get it. You know, we've they're, tried everything. They're a stubborn group. That should have happened when Vistion was running. But I do agree with you. It's probably a several hundred thousand dollar mill and overlay project. I mean, that's we looked at it and just just based upon the distances and the surface area. Yeah. Um, it's really what you're looking at. Okay. Well, let's you and I talk, and then sure. we'll take it back to this group next week, or next two weeks. We're going we to do that. meeting again in two weeks. We can do that. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Dave, you have anything else? Uh, just a couple minor things. Um, we've had a couple calls, and we and utilities have been working with the street department on this. A couple calls about waters already standing out in the street. Most of those issues is because there is snow covering up the catch basins. Mm -hmm. The street department... Uh, 
is covered up and trying to take care of that. We have a crew out as we speak yep. opening, opening those basins. So if people have a catch basin near their home, if they could remove that snow off those catch mm -hmm. basins as this snow begins to melt and, and rain coming in, I think Thursday, Thursday uh, they won't have water up under their yards. Good chance that is. Uh, so I would, I would uh, ask that the community would, would on their own find those and and uh, clean the snow off. We have a bigger issue uh, on North Grand, and I believe the street department is working with that entity to fix that. Uh, but if they would, if people would do that, I think everybody will be better off uh, if they would do that. Uh, also, I've had a few calls regarding. Um, parking and other issues on the proposed Grand Avenue project. Um, I don't have the number uh, in my cell phone I was looking for it earlier, but if they want to call City Hall, uh, call the Mayor's office or Utility office, we can give them the number of the uh, contracted uh, general contact, which is the, the construction inspector. We can give you the name and number of that person. They can call them and get specifics. Uh, the the uh, mayor's office, street department, utilities all only know as broad as what we're involved in. This person can tell them more details. What so, are they doing up there? I, I saw the temporary <clears throat> no parking signs. Uh, I, I believe that those uh, signs are because of the tree cutting. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, if yeah. that is true... Yeah, that's what I, they're for. Okay. We put those signs up. That's okay. what they're okay. for. So then I, uh, it with uh, uh, chief's approval, I would say that people could park there in the evening. They can just not during the day. Yeah. And we told them that. Yeah. Well, that's. They, I'm Dale, can calls. you make that clear? During the day, we're trying to keep them from parking there, so they can take the trees down. At not, you know, at night they can park. There's nobody. As long as there's nobody working there, they can park there. And that's what the sign says, doesn't it? There. Yeah. Um, one gentleman called me this morning, he's a truck driver, he's in Oklahoma, and he'll be in, in this, this Friday, he's in on the weekends and stuff. His, his car, and he's got two trucks sitting on the street in that area, and some of his neighbors got a hold of him and told him that, uh, you know, they're going to tow it off and all this type of thing. And I assured him they weren't going to tow it off, but he needed to move it this weekend, though, because they're going to be cutting trees, and he's been advised of that, but he's one that didn't know anything about cutting any trees or anything else. He's out of town through the week and home on the weekend. So and all I got to do is call down here. We put this. Well, he did this morning, and you, if you got that number, get I, it to Melissa. I have and, it uh, right here. Okay, just give that to Melissa, and that way okay. I get it from her. Then I can give this guy if he's got any specifics on anything, like you said. But uh, I've taken care of it for now. The long as they don't, you know, he's going to move it this weekend when he comes home. Now that same person left word at utilities and also called the street department. We've got conflicting. Uh, addresses, but the cell phone numbers match. Well, so I'll we'll call I'll tell you what happened. They put those signs on Grand Avenue that's by mistake. Yeah, that's and then we moved them over to 21st. And that may be causing a lot of... We're not on Grand Avenue. It won't be for a while. We're on 21st. I, I did have a call regarding Grand Avenue, too, of someone who is... They travel enough that they're not in town often enough that they did not see the media and did not go to the meeting. So I... Uh, explained what I could, and then gave them the number of that um, contact. So, Your Honor, should we put that number in the paper so it does? I yeah. think Daryl's got it. Don't you? I, I've got it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. you. Want Gary's or yes, Mark? Gary Fox. Okay. So I, I would filter things through Gary okay. myself. You got anything else? Um, I think that's it. Okay. Can we do this. What is this uh, we're gonna overtime on that. We don't have to pay that. No, no, we're gonna we're gonna let that go until next time. Oh, okay, okay. I'm still on. Uh, okay. Uh, Clerk Treasurer and I are working on that. Oh, okay. We, we're not ready to establish policy here. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I, while you're standing there, I want you to note if you look at your water report. Um, the profit in the water for the month of uh, the previous month, January. Is one thousand seven hundred forty-eight dollars twenty-seven cents. That's how thin we're running. If you switch over to sewer, which is in the yellow, we lost fourteen dollars and fifty-seven cents. And if you go to stormwater, we took in one hundred fifty-six thousand uh, nine hundred thirty-two. Uh, 
the storm water is, is is doing all right, but when you talk about a multi-million dollar project like we're talking about, yeah, no. it doesn't go very far. But I know, I, at least I believe, that the city council is not going to be anxious to look at raising water and utility rates, so we've got to be very careful how we spend money. You know, we get this 3000 here and 15000 there and 10000 there, which we've got to do. And I, I want Dale to make a budget for the rest of the year, or at least try to put a for plan of spending together, what it's going to take, if it's wellhead inspection, or if it's this inspection, or this report, or that report, because we just can't come here in two weeks and allot ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to all these little things. And I know IDEM wants it, and NDOT wants it, but if we keep spending like that, the, the, the council's going to be looking at, they're going to have to raise water rates and sewer rates. With the exception, we're, we're nip and tuck here. With the exception of some uh, unusual uh, expenditures, uh, you will see some months lower than others just due to periodic payments, whether it be to the Bank of New York or payment in lieu of taxes or insurance. Well, and I, I realize that, but when you're running three to five months in the red, you just can't do it. So I want you to try to make some sort of a budget what things are coming down the line. Okay? Yes, sir. So we can, we can look at it's it. Forecast. Right? Not be just reactive to whatever forecast. comes up. I don't have that report. Yes, you do. Do I? I don't see. No, we don't have that. I'm sorry. I don't even find that. I'm not looking for either. I got them circled. Okay, swell. I think I'll start with that. Yeah, that same data is elsewhere. We got that number. Yeah, this is in graphic form. It makes it real easy to see it and understand it. Very good. Mike, you want to see this? I have a place. Yes. No, Thank I didn't. Uh, we don't use I'll, I'll, I'll start, start copying okay, this for you. Okay, I thought you had it. No, we have this, yeah. but it's hard to read, so I don't put it out to everybody because you can misunderstand it really. Sure. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. We have, uh, can we get this? Your honor? I'll give it to you. I'll, from now I mean, on, I don't need it now. But I thought it wasn't your pen. No, it's <coughs> okay. Um, David, counselor. <coughs> Here we are. Uh, Officer to Brad Rosser talked to him a month ago, I believe, and uh, <coughs> I'm asking uh, at this time if we could possibly uh, put him on uh, the city's insurance, medical insurance. The reason we're asking this is Brad has children and a family. He's already worked for us for a year, and I'd like for you to forego the 90 day uh, probationary period and put him on our insurance because he's worked for us for a year. As a he's reserve, part time. Part time. Yes. yes. As a so reserve. he's he's proved that you know. Sure. He's proved himself, and it's just he's only been there 30 days without insurance. I'd like to put him on. Um, it's it's the right thing to do. Julie, what is the cost of the insurance? Can you tell me per mm -hmm. month? Or? I can't tell you right off the top of my head. Okay. And he'll pay 10 percent. Yes. Okay. I make a motion, Your Honor, that we put Brad Rosser on the city's insurance. Is there a second? We'll have to make it official March 1st. March 1st. Is there a second to that? I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? I, I just do want it noted that so we don't set a precedent, he has worked for us for exactly. a year. That this doesn't become a habit with everybody that. You know, sure, that's a good point. Okay. That we don't, yeah, that we still require. They okay, pretty not, much know not that. Not just any, somebody that came in without previous no, experience no. with us. Sure. What the, the contract originally required a year, that we waited a year to put them on. Mm -hmm. But with the Affordable Care Act, we're no longer allowed to do that. It has to be 90 days. That's the maximum we can okay. wait before putting new employees on the health insurance. Okay. And in fact, he's worked for us for a year. He's right. done more sure. than 90 days. Yeah, he's, I think he'll be fine. Improved himself. Himself. Yeah. All in favor, say aye. <coughs> aye. Motion here. That's as of March 1st now. March 1st. Yeah. Have him come down so we can get him the information. Okay. Public forum. Not much public left. Did you have anything under? Nope. Okay. Where's the ambulance? Still in the shop. Yeah, we had the same problem with the ambulance again. We had to tear it down. This is our third time. And really? We talked to him this morning. He don't know if we'll have it going this week. Okay. Uh, we keep biting our fingernails and we keep going after a grant, but we're going to have to bite the bullet here sooner or later, I guess. No. I've talked with the county and the county's aware of it. Whether they'll 
appropriate the money or not, I don't know. <laughs> that that, old, that 6 0 engine is just not doing the job. Okay. Uh, under public forum, I wanted to tell you that on February 14th, you probably saw on the paper, we had a couple that had visited Congressville last summer. They liked it so well. It was it really it was longer than that? It was 18 months 18 ago. Months. And they liked it so well, they decided to come back here and get married. They made arrangements with the train depot, and they emailed me. And we had the wedding over there. It was quite a nice wedding. And uh, they're coming back to ride the train. So I think it speaks well. You know, I hear this all the time. I don't want to live in Congressville. I, I don't want the job because I don't want to live here. And here, people from Michigan decided just after one visit, this is where they wanted to get married. I thought that was pretty nice. It is. So uh, I want to mention that. Old business. Do we have any old business? Jane, you got any old business? Um, the $3,000 administrative hold we put on the historic Commerceville purchase uh, for the grant to apply for the state grant, we had that on hold until this meeting. Right. Okay. Do you, uh, you want to act on that today? Take that out of that money. It'll yeah. come out of the 20000 Yes. Uh, we did tell them we would hold it till the next meeting and then we would release it. So that's, we can either hold it, I guess, or discuss it again at the next meeting. I, but we I, did, that was how we left it. I th personally think it's a very worthwhile cause, mm -hmm. and I think that it's part of the bicentennial. It's for the best betterment of the community, mm -hmm. and I think it's time we release it and just let it go. I agree. Unless, uh, Mr. Baker, you feel different, that money is the Board of Works to spend at this point. Right? That's right. Yeah, the, and, and that expenditure was a matching grant with Landmark. Of right, they're going to match it for three for, uh, To attempt to get downtown Connorsville included on the National yes. Historic Register. Right, right. Which uh, is apparently very important because uh, from that ensues many other benefits. We could get grants. And, yes. Yeah. Well, I think we should do it. Yeah, I need a motion release to release the funds. Jane, want to make a motion? Yes, I move that we release the $3,000, the administrative hold, and give the check to historic Connorsville to pursue the grant. I what second that. Got a motion and a second. Is there any uh, discussion? Actually, it's the Historic Preservation Committee. Yeah. Historic, historic Preservation. Okay. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. You'll put that money in a special fund and then you keep track of it for us, please. Thank you, Jane, for reminding me of that. I've forgotten about it. Um, I, think you, I think the next thing I ought to do, and I'm asking you, I think I better plan to get the plaque for the centennial and the bicentennial ready. We need to pick a place. Is there any volunteers like to serve on the committee? I'll have to appoint one if you don't. <laughs> it's bad when you only got four on the on the group. We could appoint Ron. He's not here. <laughs> I like that. I like that. No, I. Well, Fran, I'm going to appoint you. Yeah, because I don't work. Yeah, you know, <laughs> don't work, so. you're readily available. I don't want to say you don't work, but you're readily available. You could say I work part time. You do work you, part time. But you come out and say you don't work. No, I'm not going to say that anymore. Oh, I appreciate that. I'm appointing Fran because he's readily available. <laughs> and uh, Fran and I will get with a member of the Bicentennial. I'll probably pick on the historian again, Pat Suman. She is the Fayette County historian. Uh, we'll get a proposal or two together and we'll bring back to you. Of course, you have to make the decision. And I do want to ask you today, I, I talked to the committee all through the Bicentennial. We were thinking about putting it down here by the flagpoles and we got some designs. Then we thought we would think about putting a plaque over there where the big circle is across the street in our parking lot. Um, then I got to thinking the park is already designated as a national historic place. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'd be well to think about putting it in a prominent place in the park. It'll never be touched. We're down here. You could build a building over there. This building could be destroyed. These flagpoles gone. And this is something that ought to be there. Forever. Mm -hmm. Well, I hopefully agree. forever. I don't know how long a memorial lasts. But uh, are, are you thinking the same way? I thought yeah. about yeah. 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 As you mentioned yeah. it, that's you think where it should go, go better? in my opinion. Probably. Well, and Probably. We'll, we'll study the park to get two or three places, and we'll ask other people where, where in the park is a nice prominent mm -hmm. place. You know, where's the center of activity there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll begin to work on that, and we'll get something back to you in a few meetings, okay? But I'll ask Pat Suman to work with us on okay. that. Okay. And maybe Donna. 
uh, Scott Donna is the his, it's very good yeah, yeah. doing the historic preservation yeah okay um, anything else under old business uh, miscellaneous business anybody got anything <coughs> claims well you tell all these <coughs> Water claims is $297,978.91, of which $188,100 of that was Badger meters. Sewer was $333,372.56, which also was the Badger meters, plus a $25,000 bond transfer. Stormwater was $12,589.83. Trash, $49,946 for a total of $693,887.30. The city claims that the amount was 267 in number and the, the money $291,781.39 and of that amount $165,092 went for insurance, not health insurance, but Julie Workman's comp, liability, yes, liability. vehicle, property, and so forth? Right. Okay. And I will tell you, our insurance went down. And that's it went good down. That's $12,000. Well, yeah. that's a, a move in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Sure. And a good part of that was the liability on the trash truck. That's what I saw. It, when I saw it was the workman's comp. Yeah, the workman's, the workman's comp, comp went yeah. down, and that had to be because mm -hmm. of the yeah. trash truck. Yeah. Yes. So we said it would, and it did. Yeah. 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 Okay, you've heard the claims. Is there a motion? I move that we accept the claims as, and approve the claims as they've been submitted. By Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second to approve the claims. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Before we quit today, manufacturing matters. This was a pilot program that was done at Lafayette. We started it. We had our first class uh, graduate in January. <coughs> we had two people from Connorsville. You can join this class. You can get a scholarship pay to pay the tuition of $2,600. It starts on February 24th. You have to call these two numbers, and I'll give this to the press. They may already have it. This is not going to get you a job for sure, but when you can present your certificate that you graduated from this to a prospective employer, it gets your foot in the door pretty good. This is important. We started this in, a, in conjunction with Duke Energy, uh, Work One, the City of Connorsville, City of Richmond, uh, Rushville. We've worked together on this, and I'm real proud that we've had two people in the first class. That's great. This is very important because people are looking for qualified people. It not only teaches you about manufacturing, but there's some key things such as drugs and being on schedule, being on time. It teaches a lot of different things. So uh, I'd like for anybody that's interested, there's two numbers on here. It's not too late to get in this class. With that, it's difficult to find work with just a high school graduation now or a this GED. Helps you. you have to have, and, and, a the, and there are there are sponsors that are paying the tuition if you qualify. So I don't know why anybody that's looking for a job in manufacturing wouldn't jump on this. I mean, to me, it looks so, like it's a real thing. Good deal. With that, uh, I take a motion to adjourn. So a so second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Hey, Dave, I got a question.